following production has been recorded in lockdown. J Dragon Arc Productions presents Doctor Who. History has written one line at a time. What Benton Did. Written by Jamie H.C. And recorded by Mark Young. What John Benton did every day was get up promptly, carry out his well-timed morning routine and leave home for whatever lay ahead of him. Apart from today. Today had given him that a bad stroke of luck. Firstly, his alarm had failed to go off. Secondly, he had had to change clothes after he spilled some of his cereal down the front of his original outfit choice. And thirdly, his car had broken down. All this ill fortune had waited, much to Benton's annoyance, until the most inconvenient time possible. For today it was the day of Unit's reunion party. They only did the reunions every five years. Or was it ten? His head was a little fuzzy on that detail. And he had been so looking forward to catching up with old friends. Sure, the lovely Miss Jones was currently somewhere in Brazil. And Miss Smith and her young friend, Brendan, were currently engaged in some supernatural investigations at Cambridge University. But there were still plenty of other friends present he would have liked to have seen. Good old Jimmy Turner. Jack Tracy. What a great laugh he could be. Even Mike Yates. But especially the man himself. Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart. It all made it there painful that at the present moment he was stuck in his car a good 60 miles from where he ought to be. And time was passing with no sign of help. What made things even worse is that the car was sold to him by himself. Well, not exactly himself, but rather a form of himself. After that terrible situation which had been internally dubbed the attempted android invasion. Unit had been left with several deactivated androids on their hands. They had little success with them for quite some time. In fact... Alistair had left before they managed to crack even just the vocal replication circuitry. Eventually, as a result of this hard work, Unit had ended up with two functioning and fully capable Android duplicates. And one of them was Benton's. Attempts had been made to change the Android, but they had all failed miserably and it would just revert very quickly back to Benton's appearance and personality. It had been Benton's offhand remark that they should scrap it for parts that had inadvertently sealed its fate. Benton was being reassigned to undercover work in Peru at the time, and so it was decided by somebody, somewhere, that the android would come in handy, providing an alibi for him at home. And so, the android Benton was sent to take up his life for a time. What nobody had expected is that the android, not bound to military service or loyalty, would become fascinated by car parts. It had very quickly decided that it wanted to become a car's salesman. It had gone on to become quite the sociable android too. It was likely that half of Cumbria knew the name John Benton now. He hadn't been told until he had returned from Peru, of course. By which point, it would have been all too noticeable if he'd taken the android back to HQ. Not only would his sudden disappearance from the car sales industry raise eyebrows, but he wasn't at all equipped for talking to people who thought they knew him. So, he left it where it was, in Cumbria. Of course, when HQ got wind of this, they came up with their own rather devious idea. Thus, here Benton was, stuck in his car 60 or so miles from the reunion, with a passenger, the other android. It was admittedly not entirely uncanny, but still, it did trouble him somewhat. Why HQ wanted him to do this, he had no idea. Unless it was perhaps to try and soften the blow for Alistair. Which of course was a complete bust now that he was stuck. As fortune would have it, a car started to approach on the long road behind him. Sensing the opportunity, 
Benton speedily got out of his car and flagged down the other one. When it came to a standstill, he explained his situation to the bewildered driver. Well, just what little was required to be explained. The driver agreed to take them as he was heading in that direction as it was. And so, John Benton fetched his passenger and got him into the driver's car. Understandably, the driver only got even more bewildered. He likes to be very showy at these reunions, you see. It's his old running gag, Benton lied. Isn't that right, Dr. Smith? The android of teethy grins, curls, and eccentric clothes nodded. The driver, satisfied, set off. All Benton had to do was hope that for 60 miles, the android doctor wouldn't draw as much attention as the real one did. Thankfully, the trip was uneventful. Aside from one or two occasions in which the android doctor offered them both jelly babies. He got the driver to drop them off just before the front gate to avoid any further complications and thanked him. The driver sped away, blissfully unaware that he had just been on the front lawn of Unit Tertiary Headquarter. If Benton had let him go just a little bit further up the road, he would have no doubt seen the sign. The sign was there to make sure that legally, if anyone trespassed, they couldn't try to hand wave it as mere accident. Some young Indian chap in a frock coat had tried that excuse and gotten away with it surprisingly successfully. They hadn't taken any chances after that. Not that it mattered too much. Unit Tertiary HQ was mostly home to administrative facilities. Nothing of any significance. It was, therefore, best suited for hosting such reunions and even better suited for allowing journalists to run amok because, of course, there'd always be at least one reporter from the Times or the Telegraph. Reaching the front door of the building, he spoke to the man at the door. He had his unit pass and, well, the android doctor's attire spoke enough for him. Though the majority of unit staff didn't know the doctor at all, they did know that the unusual clothes were given. He was quickly directed through the building with the android doctor towards the briefing room at the back. Mike Yates gave him a quick wave as he passed and started to rush over. He waved back but quickly pointed at the doctor beside him and raised a hand to indicate, give me five minutes. Yates nodded and he continued through the building. He could get to his socialising once he'd gotten the android to Alistair, though that did raise a thought to Benton. Did Alistair even know that he was still in active service? Surely nobody would have told him that he wasn't a car salesman. But then, this was a reunion. He could just omit that detail. If Alistair was with Charles Crichton, which of course he would be, Alistair would never turn down a private drink with his successor, then it was probably best not to mention the Peru Initiative or the Countermeasures Collaboration or the Zen Project. Reaching the door to the briefing room, he was suddenly halted by the Lara abrupt sergeant. Sorry sir, but you can't go in there right now. The colonel is waiting as someone returning, said the sergeant. Matter of factly, it was always the same with the sergeants. He could remember being one. They would stick to their guns until the air stopped turning. Still, he was determined to try. Listen, son, I know he'll be waiting in Alistair, Benton said. The sergeant's eyes flickered slightly. Recognition. So he was right in that assumption. He continued on. And I'm here to see Alistair. I've brought him an old friend as a nice surprise. This is the doctor. He gestured at the android doctor. The android doctor irritably mumbled to himself something about homo sapiens. The doctor? The sergeant asked. The confusion was apparent in his voice. To Benton, it sounded like this was going to be a harder deal than expected. But then he heard the all too familiar voice of Alistair. He had returned. How? Ah yes. The back door out onto the gardens. And so Benton did something he wasn't often prone to doing. He leaned over the sergeant's desk, quickly pushed the door release and opened the briefing room door. The sergeant didn't have time to react. He hadn't been expecting Benton to do that at all. With the door thrust open, Benton had thrown himself in on reflex. And that's when Benton was greeted by a surprising sight. 
and he knew immediately that his streak of bad luck had only got him worse. For there was Charles Crichton, looking at him fiercely. Next to him was Alistair, his jaw wide. And next to them was the doctor, the first one he'd met. Moppy hair, short and curious, in a fur coat. It came to Benton's mind in this moment of shock and panic that was yet to far, no doubt. Most inappropriate of times for recollections, but he could remember hearing that the doctor had snuck one away from the London underground. The doctor was grinning widely. Before Benton could speak in response to the looks of the three men in front of him, the android doctor bounced into the room and stood beside him. In true to fashion, the android said exactly what he told it to say to strangers. Hello, I'm the doctor. Anybody for jelly baby? Benton wasn't sure what he'd do next, but whatever he did, it would have to be nothing short of a miracle.